hello it's Sarah and it's time for this year's random acts of kindness random acts of Christmas kindness I should say these are Tracy Moreau she did three this year um, remember last year we did the Santa and I think he was supposed to be um, on one of these little tags I found the tags later uh, but I just found these little um, rectangular pieces of wood and did it on that. She did this little, actually, I don't know if this was from last year or I just found the pattern from previous years that she'd done. This little gingerbread and this little snowflake. So she has similar ones this year. But I like how you add the little three-dimensional accessory, you know. So a little pearl flat back. I put a charm on the bottom of this guy. And this was just because I had more of those round discs and then I've had these. See, because you're not always going to be able to find the, the piece that she painted it on, which I wasn't able to this year either because I did go to Hobby Lobby. So I'll put these aside. And this year she did, and it's on blue because I ran out of white printer paper. This one is called, let's see, she doesn't have a name um, for the specific guy. Let's see. It's just a little polar bear on a snowflake. That's one of them. Then she did these three kind of like um, candy cane tags, I guess. I don't know, wooden tags. I don't know. And she did another gingerbread, which I haven't painted him yet. Um, because I figured I did the other gingerbread, and you guys could figure that out yourselves. So I'll show you what I've done. Here's the um, tags, which I love. And the reason I love them is because Tracy gets into more mixed media techniques. So what she's done is she's added um, the stamping to the background. So they're just on these little wooden tags, and I just wrote Happy Holidays and the Year. But I stamped, with a regular stamp, um, some music notes behind it in the background. And then you paint on top of that. So they turned out super cute. And then here's the little polar bear. And this was the tags I was able to find. On the directions, it shows that it is from Hobby Lobby, which I went to Hobby Lobby, make it Christmas parts, mini snowflakes. Well, they didn't have the mini snowflakes. This is just called snowflake ornaments. But this is the make it Christmas parts for holiday projects, right? But, so I got these. They only, you know, they're a pack of six, but they didn't have, and I looked and I asked, I always ask, um, and they've been there, supposedly, the Christmas stuff has been out since, like, spring. I mean, I don't know how, I mean, that's what she said. Um, so I just got what they had, and it was this snowflake, and he fits fine. I mean, if you look at the picture, there is a little, you can tell that, like, this one is smaller. See how big he is on there? He just fits the snowflake better, and this one, he's a little smaller in the center of the snowflake. But it's still, it's still cute. It still does the trick. There's still enough room to paint on them. Um, and I like it. And then let's see what it said on the, the other one I did. It says, these are from Michaels. Wooden tag number 327255. And I actually got this set. This is Recollections. See, I don't know where you get that number from. So... But it, I just, because it's it was wooden tags, and, the, and I just thought, all right, let me grab them. And it fit just fine on there. So I'm going to go ahead and start showing you how to paint these. Now, these are um, decorative painting projects. That's what I would consider them. Um, the first thing you want to do, well, besides get your wood and prep it. So I've already prepped these two pieces, um, and just so I can kind of speed this up because you know I'm not the quickest when it comes to videos um, and I've prepped a couple of snowflakes and already um, traced the patterns on and stuff so in decorative painting you're gonna need a few things 
So let's just, I'm gonna, I'll do these tags first because I really like them. Um, she gives you the directions here. So you go down your directions. She gives you the, the surface, the paint colors that she uses, which I just substitute out what I have. Like I didn't have the Tuscan red. I ended up using two, I did it twice, let's see. These were in a darker red and I didn't like them as much. I used um, country red and Napa red. So this is the darker red, because hers looked really dark to me. But I actually really like this color better, the tus I mean the country. Just because it's, I don't know, it's a truer red, I think. So, um, like, let's just compare two that are the same. I mean, there's not much of a difference. This one's just a little brighter, I think. Really, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. So just use what you have is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then she's got decoupage glitter, which I didn't have, but I have this starlight varnish. I looked all over for this one. This was my favorite holiday varnish by Folk Art, Sparkle Varnish. And I don't know if they sell it anymore. This is really old, but I love this. But this one's pretty good. I like this one. This is um, putting a lot, it's got sparkle. Like you can definitely see the sparkle on there. Anywho, uh, the brush guys. Now, I wanted to talk about brushes a little bit. I had purchased some of the brushes from the pa Papillion brushes from Artist Club. And I honestly haven't been using them very much and they're really not holding up as, as well as I'd hoped. So I think I'm gonna try these Dynasty brushes. These are the ones that Tracy uh, recommends and she says you can go to thebrushguys.com. So I'm gonna order a few, um, definitely a half inch shader. This is a, is this a half inch? Three quarter inch, I don't know. I used to use these, these are the, um, American painters for these Michaels and AC Moore used to sell them and they don't anymore but these things last for me and they don't fray and they don't get messed up so anyway brushes are something you're gonna have to find by tra through trial and error and I mean yeah a lot of different artists recommend different brands but sometimes they might have a a deal with that company or I'm not really sure but um, I'm gonna try the dynasty and we'll see how they go uh, and brushes usually will run you at least three to four dollars a brush. So and actually they have a set of these on Amazon for 20 bucks and you get five brushes. So I might do that um, just to try them out. Uh, what else? It says miscellaneous sanding sponge, gold paint pen, text or script stamp of choice, black stays on stamp pad. Okay, so it always gives you the, the supplies first and foremost. And then she talks about her, every year I paint a hundred or so pins and gift them away to total strangers. Whomever I feel is in need of a little Christmas spirit, I begin posting the free pattern sheets like this one on social media to share with other painters and crafters in the hope that they would in turn practice a random act of Christmas kindness. I was not disappointed. So this is your challenge this year. Make a few or make hundreds. Share them with anyone that you believe could use a little kindness this holiday season. Give freely, give often, and give them a, a generosity of spirit. A random act of Christmas kindness is a gift you give yourself. And she does specify here that she doesn't want you to sell them. Just really give them. Um, so here's what it says. She's a firm believer that you can... If you cannot do big things, then do small things in abundance. The holiday season is often a difficult is often difficult for some, and the stresses of everyday life during the season can feel compounded. Try brightening someone's day with this little gift. Give them to the cashier at your favorite shop, the bank teller, the elderly lady in line behind you, or anyone that you think could use a dose of Christmas cheer. And it can be a total stranger or the lady next door. I've, I gave them to my neighbors last year for sure. Um, and I did give a few just at the grocery store just to random people. It was kind of fun. Um, a small and simple act of kindness can do a great deal to make a person's holiday season feel a little brighter. Merry Christmas. And it says the rules. Sadly, we need them, though they are pretty simple. Please do not make copies of and sell this pattern. And do not sell the pins you create from it unless for charity. So that's a good idea. Like if you did do a craft show, just donate the proceeds um, from 
these little um, free patterns because she's giving them to us for free um, to charity. So, all right, and then the other very important thing about this is the pattern. Now, this is what I've talked about. Coming from the, the world of decorative painting, I wasn't used to creating my own patterns. And so this year, and some in the year years prior, but a lot this year, I've really tried to create my own patterns or, or find inspiration from someone else's work and then tweak it and change it and make it my own. And so that's become known as Sarah style, right? So I've decided I'm a very whimsical painter. I do enjoy um, creating things with, that have that are either too big or out of proportion or just bright colors. I mean, I like that style. So um, I think you can change this. Nothing says you can't. It's just she's offering us her designs to start with. And then, you know, it's never going to look like Tracy's because she's Tracy and I'm Sarah. So I'm going to paint it and it's going to turn out how it turns out. So for instance, here's my that one and, you know, this one's really a very easy one to do. It's a candy cane. It's not like it's a very difficult pattern. So the first thing you want to do is trace the pattern, if you choose to, or you can free free um, freehand it onto some tracing paper. So this is that see-through tracing paper, and you can use a um, a light box or whatever. Sometimes I used to hold the pattern up against the window so that you could see through it. It was a little harder to see this because it's on blue paper. But you just trace out the pattern and actually I decided because my um, tags were I think a little bigger than hers probably were I just freehanded this box around it when I when I ended up painting it I'll show you what I mean so when I traced um, yeah so on this one you can see the difference this is from the actual tracing this box around it <coughs> But when I ended up freehanding it, I just took it to the corner. So I went to the corner just to fill the tag better. I thought this was a little small. See what I'm saying? So this one, I filled the tag. But it's, it's personal preference. Don't, you know, do what floats your boat. Do what makes you happy. Um, so you're going to trace those. And then you're going to prep your, your piece. And so these little pieces of wood are just raw balsa wood I guess and you know what I should do another one I'm gonna do one because I want to show you what I did now Tracy does not have us prepping with gesso or even um, it just says base the tags with one coat of Tuscan red so she doesn't have you using any type of a sealer and for me I noticed that when there isn't a sealer on the wood my floats they they skip they don't flow as easily as they can so I'm gonna use this um, which color did I say it was my oh the country red I'm gonna use this country red and a little bit of a sealer and I like to use this all-purpose sealer by Joe Sonia I've had I've used it since the beginning of when I first started decorative painting and all you want to do is put a little puddle. I'm just going to do one tag real quick. A little puddle of one to one. And I just want to show you what that looks like. So a little, like a dime maybe size, not even. Can you see that? Yeah. And a little bit of the Tuscan red, the same size. So just a one to one, right, mixture. And I'm just going to use this flat brush and just mix them together. And that's all you really need to get. Um, and this way we're gonna paint and seal at the same time. So I'm just, I have that on my brush and I'm not gonna be, um, I don't want this opaque. I want it to be sheer. And then I'll turn it around and finish it up this way. And see how I'm just picking up the little, um, so it's totally, uh, there's no ridges. I'm going to do the back too while I'm at it since I have enough paint. And that way everything's sealed 
and it's ready to go because I didn't finish the backs of my snowflakes. I should have done this when I did the snowflakes just to save the time. Prepping was never my favorite. I really like to get to the details. All this stuff is just work. No. <laughs> so put the TV on and prep a bunch of them all at one time. And I'm just going to stick that in the water and I'm going to just t stip, put this on. I'm going to lean it up against a bottle just to dry, just like that. But that's basically it. That's, that's all you need to do to prep your piece. I actually used the other color for this, but you can see how the raw wood is kind of, sh and I did sand these, okay? So when it dries, what happens is the wood, it kind of brings the nap of the wood up. It, it kind of wakes the wood up, and you just want to sand it, and I have this very fine sandpaper. I think it's a 400. This is a wet, dry sandpaper that I used to use for resin, but it's a fine sandpaper. And just sand off those little nubs that kind of come up on the wood and then you're going to take either I ended up using these two stamps um, a script stamp or whatever you want whatever you have in your stash but I had this script stamp by Hero Arts and I have this uh, what let's see composer's dream music notes and I just stamped that with I used um, archival but she uses stays on still of just a permanent black ink so you'll get that on there, okay? So all I've done is one coat of paint and sealer, sanded it, stamped some black script or music notes or something. You can see that. And then you're going to shade around the edges, okay? So see how it's darker around the edges? The one thing I'm going to skip that I didn't do, I, I may have done it, but I don't like it. The reason hers are so dark is because she ends up putting a wash on the whole tag of black, of soft black. It's called soft black. And I, so I did that on a few of them and I just think it's way too dark. So I decided not to, not to do it. So I did it on these and by the time, because I'm a very heavy handed shader as it, as it is. So I decided not to do that part and let some of that bright red shine through. So I'm going to leave that step off. It's up to you guys if you want to do it. Let me have a drink. I'm very thirsty. All right. But I did like to do this, uh, <clears throat> the shading on the outside edge. So I'm going to take, I'll use my bigger angle brush. I always use an angle to shade and people use a technique called floating in the decorative painting world and so we're going to float some of this soft black. I cor I'm going to water blot corner load so I've just taken some of the soft black on the corner the tip of this brush and I'm all the bristles are on the surface. You have to push the bristles onto this wax palette called a paper palette so that you have water and paint and then and you can just use your Tim Holtz um, inks distress inks to do this you can do whatever you have but this is how I I love to do it I love floating because I've just done it for years and years and years and I I'm pretty good at it and so I get the desired result I don't get frustrated but if you get frustrated this is no time to be frustrated so basically you're gonna do that on all four sides I just like you need to let it dry wait till that shine goes away before you go across it again because you'll pick up what you did and then you'll have something like this and then the next step is to trace on your design so let's do hmm which one did I need? Let's see. Oh, I have, let's see. I have to do the candy cane. Let's do the candy cane. So here's how I would trace this. And I'm very impatient and very much, um, I don't fuss about things. Do you know what I mean? Well, depends. Depends the, what the thing is. But when I trace, I you need a carbon paper or graphite paper. And I think they're different. But either one will work and you'll be able to get 
these lines to transfer onto your project. So the first thing you want to do, and I'm going to use the light, the white one. I don't know if it's called gray or white, but, um, and I'm just lining this up so that the candy cane fits so proportionately from here to here. That's kind of how I'm lining it up and top to bottom. And listen, you are going to have to figure this out yourself you know where you want to put your pattern and then I'm just going to hold it in place and you could use some um, tape but I'm just going to wing it and then I'm using a stylus this is what they call a stylus and I'm not like I said I'm not going to do a, uh, that square but I'm just going to do the candy cane shape and I didn't even um, draw the stripes so it looks like I'm gonna have to wing those you know what I'm saying like I didn't put them on the she has them on the pattern but I never drew them on here and you can um, lift it up like hold it and lift up to see if you missed anything that's why a piece of tape is probably a good way to go especially if you're using a very big pattern and you only want to do at this point the main lines you don't need the detail lines if you're doing a bigger pattern because you're going to want to paint over all that stuff um, but for this one you're just going to do everything and that should be good so now i've got my pattern on my piece and this one was super simple because it's really all done with warm white she uses warm white i'm using antique white or i'm sorry buttermilk so it's very very simple I'm just gonna base in all of these areas of white so here's the other thing this is why I have this on my because I'm gonna look at the pattern real quick because I did not put the stripe lines on and that's just so the candy cane has a little tip right here and then she made stripes. And they're kind of arched. You know what I mean? Like they're not straight lines. It's a lot of stripes. I don't know if I put that many on my other one. And so now I'm ready to go. I'm gonna use kind of a small brush. I think this is a number one round. It's a one liner. A little bit of water. I always have water in my brush. I'd rather do two thin coats of paint than one thick gloppy coat. So you come in and just make a little slicker wetter puddle. And then this is gonna be able to go on here real nice. Hopefully my head won't get in the shot. I generally would use a flat brush to base coat because I like using the um, chisel edge of the brush to get right up against those edges but because this is such a small pattern I'm still doing it I'm still flattening out this round and able to go around those edges like and get right up in there I even wiggle the brush I I twist it I do you know but you don't want to leave ridges well I don't so just two thin coats of paint is um, gonna do the trick because we're gonna shade this seems like this piece of wood has a little crack going down it there you see that little line I probably I could have probably done that use the other side for the front if I would have looked at the wood it might not be as um, have that on the other side because most wood has imperfections in it little uh, you could even have um, that looks pretty good what are they called um, 
little sap, bits of sap and so and that actually will bleed through so some bigger projects I have that um, Joe cut me out of pine um, you have to really seal those with a good amount of gesso or something to keep the sap from it will bleed through over the years it will f come through your project so um, let me see the back of this so yeah it's smoother on the back and this line is what I'm talking about so you're just gonna do this and you're gonna give it two coats two thin coats so I keep adding a little bit of water to this paint just a little just so that it flows now let's see I think I'm going to do this one and listen if you need a pointier brush this is such small work you could use a, a 10 slash 0 liner like if you really wanted a pointy liner brush move the piece so that it's comfortable so that you you know my hand will stay in the same I'm not going to go like this you know I want to just keep my hand in the best possible position to get um, the most control right hopefully my camera's on because I get painting is very very zen for me and let's see yeah and I have plenty of battery I think the plug on my camera is getting loose like when I plug it in it doesn't connect so I'm gonna have to look into that the whole candy cane is going to get outlined with white as well so all of the uh, lines I could actually have gone around this first and outlined it which that would have been a kind of cool way to go because I didn't do that on the other one see I have a lot of paint on my brush right now like there's a little blob so I'm just gonna push it down and flatten it out because you don't whatever's going on on your brush is what you're gonna end up putting on your piece so brush control is important you want to know what you're bringing to the table you know type thing <clears throat> and I would always recommend having a q-tip on hand q-tips are an excellent tool to use if you're unhappy I'm just putting that there so I know where I'm going um, you can take it off because acrylic paint dries fast but it doesn't dry that fast you can absolutely you have a little play time um, so I'm gonna go leave a little bit of red space next to these items here so that it you can differentiate all right so I'll go off camera and I'm gonna get this whole thing two coats of paint and then look here I'm gonna switch to my this is called a 10 slash zero liner script liner now you really want to thin this paint down so I'm gonna go in and really kind of get it like ink so that it'll flow off the tip of the bristles right and I'm just gonna put a line about a quarter inch in to a quarter inch in over here so going from the top of the tag right here and just go across we'll do the same thing starting about a quarter inch so right here and just go up I guess I was a little closer over to the side. I was a little crooked. My brush split a little. But that's basically it. And then we're going to outline everything too. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm just going to 
try to keep it as thin as you can. So really up on the tip of the brush and gently, um, and if the paint is flowing, you're going to be better than gloppy paint. You know what I mean? Like you really want this to flow like a like ink from a pen. So you want it really inky. And if it's thick, it's okay. It's, it's wonky, it's not perfect. But guess what, it'll look cool. But you really need that um, red line between the C and the, you know? And I think I actually highlight these with a little white at the end too. Right, so I'll be back when this is completely painted solid. One more coat, and then we'll float some shading. Be right back. All right, and now, I mean, I don't love, there's something here that I want to tell you. I don't love how the candy cane lines look, so I'm going to fix them by taking some of the base color. So the, I used um, Country Red. So I'm just taking a little bit of that on my liner brush and I just want to change the shape of this a little bit and um, add a little bit more around this. See? I just, I don't know, something about the way it just looked a little, yeah, I don't love that bump either. So you know what? We're going to float. I'm going to shade. So I like that a little better. I'm just trying to shape this, give it a little more straightness. Um, all right. I think that's, that helped. It makes me feel a little better. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is shade with two colors. We're going to use, for the background, we're going to use soft black. Soft black. And for the candy cane, asphaltum, which is just a brown. So use what you have. And I'm going to do all the left side. So if you look on here the inside of the candy cane, so, I'm sorry, not the left, the right side, so, kind of on the inside of the candy cane is where I want to go with this brown. And again, it's a float, so I'm going to use, I'm going to use the littler, <clears throat> just because I get a little heavy-handed. This is a half-inch angle brush, corner load, and work it into the bristles, and then I'm going to go around down the left side. Well, I keep saying left because it's on the left right now because I flipped the piece. That's pretty much why I'm saying that. And I'm going to do the same thing for my three. So I'm flipping the piece again and just go down all of the left sides of it. So the back. Well, let's do this little sense thing and the back of the three and the back of these little parts of the three too. Alright, so that's it. I also want to add, well we'll highlight in a sec. Let's go ahead into the soft black. And this is the part that I've kind of changed just because I liked it better. I didn't do that wash of soft black over the whole entire thing. I'm just going to take soft black and kind of maybe shade in a few other places. So definitely under here and down this side. Kirby's trying to get in here. 
And let's see how dark I do it. Like that's just how I float. Like I'm a, I'm a heavy hand. I mean, you it, you can take two, three, four times to get the color I get. Sometimes I think I don't know. I just put a lot of paint, and I'm gonna go down the other side too. And I just think that is all you really need to do. Maybe go around the side the side of the three. So this isn't on her directions. Actually, let me show you something. A lot of times on the line drawings, the artist will put um, dots, and so that's where she wants you to shade. See? So yeah, she definitely did put that on there. Oops. See the dots? That's where she wants you to shade. So I shaded the candy cane wrong because she had it here and here. So, hey, what are you going to do? Um, but yeah, I'm going to do that too. I like it up here. And I guess we'll go along the um, bottom. And I did them different. I did them all different. That's Kirby. My dog wants to come in. Hey, why do you want me? Just because I closed the door. Just if I close the door, she's just like, why? Why why is the door closed? I should be allowed in. So yeah, I mean, and that's it. It looks fine. Like you don't need any more. And I like the brightness. So if I shade all around it, like on this one, it looks like I shaded on the top of the line. Um Definitely like around this tip I shaded. Uh, but I mean, I like it. I like them both. So it's, it's per, you know, and then look, you no, know, I think I did do the same shading on this one. So you can absolutely follow the lines that she gives you. So now I'm going to take the white, just straight titanium white. Where is it? Right here. And we're going to highlight the candy cane and the three. And I'm going to just put a touch of it on the, the outside line that I told you. So I'm getting water and I'm going to make it inky. So I want my paint to be to flow off the tip of the brush. And I'm just going to take it and make a line around this edge. and down this side for a highlight. I'm going to highlight the three, the C. Well, it's a scent sign, right? I forgot to put the little line like that for scents. Um, and then I am just going to add a tiny bit of white, like just hit and miss down these edges. Oops. And that's basically it. The next thing I want to do is add some gold. So I have Dazzling Metallics Glorious Gold. And I'm going to put that on a sponge. And I should just make sure that's dry. Mm, so before I do that, let, let me show you on the bear. Same thing. I've just done everything. You go from, play, and, and she actually has you sponge the background on here. It, it's six of one, half a dozen. She also has a stencil, like a one-eighth inch stencil that she uses to put little dots, but you don't see them that much. I think this has, I spattered it, and I think it has enough going on. Um, so I just did two coats of this, and then one of the things you're going to do is shade, or, well, float, I'm going to do, oh, I need it. It's warm white, she says, but I'm using um, antique, what is this? Buttermilk. And I'm going to put that on the, all the edges of the snowflake. Now 
So you just have the paint edge facing up and go across like that. And I'm being heavy handed. I like it like that. So that's why I do it like that. And a little here and here. And then on the snowman, I mean snowman, he's a polar bear. We're going to shade with asphalt. No, we're not. We're going to shade with the blue color, actually. Let me look because I kind of forget. But I think it's Bahama blue that she just has a shade it with. And that's what I love about these, too. They're very simple. There's very few colors that we're going to use. So shade the bear with floats of thinned Bahama blue. And I happen to have Bahama blue. It's kind of like a, I don't think it's teal. It's just a light blue color. So I'm going to put that out. And we're going to shade with floats again. So corner loading. Kirby, are you laying? She's laying at my feet. That is unusual. All right, so I'm just going to do, I'm going to separate his ear from his head right here. And do another one over here. And then we're going to separate his lip from his cheek. And we'll go right up under his scarf. Across the whole thing. Um, we need to separate his cheeks. Let's see. From there, maybe a little there. How's that look? And then she has it. See, look, you can go to your tra tracing and see where she has it shaded. So a little bit next to his nose. You can't really tell. On his snout, I can't really tell. So then you can just look at the picture. That's what I do too. I just look at the picture if I need guidance. So it looks like she kind of did it on the inside here. So I'll just do it there, right next to his snout, like right here. So yeah. Okay. And then, what's up? Going to uh, hang with Evan and a couple people for a little bit. Okay. Michael Bolden. All right. Oh. Yeah. I'll be back later on. All right, honey. See you later. Um. So that looks good shading wise, right? Now we need to shade the, um, I have some of that soft black. I'm going to shade the stocking. What is that called? No, it's a scarf. It's not a stocking. So we're going to go under his face. I don't think, but see how the brush is splitting? It's disappointing. Like, I am rough. Don't get it me wrong. I definitely, you know, I'm not kind to my tools as a rule, but um, it's frustrating when. All right, so under there. And then she just has like this little, like it's an overlap, right? So we're going to do. kind of connect like this and then make a separation right here. And then on this one I actually outlined everything with my pen. I love my, um, I use it for mixed media, it's just a pen towel, wait. Don't tell you the wrong thing. Ugh. Right here, sorry. It's not a pen tell at all. A Uniball. The Uniball, Uniball Vision Fine. But I'm going to use paint this time because 
I had to use um, workable fixative to spray it to get it to be like um, to not smudge when I put the uh, varnish on there so I'm just gonna use pa paint and I mean there's nothing wrong with that let's see I want to highlight him with some white because we have some white out here we're gonna use white and we're gonna highlight like the t I have a lot of paint on my brush tops of his ears top of his head his little cheeks and then I'm going to put this all along the bottom right here I don't know why I just like it and I think it looks pretty and let's see I think that's good we have to shade his nose now she had us paint the nose with a color called dragon fruit so I just used rouge I didn't have dragon fruit so um, and then she had a shade it with I think it was Tuscan red and I only have this Napa so I'm gonna use the Napa and I don't think I mean I could have probably just used the country red too and it would have been fine but I do like it to look dark so I just put my brush down so up oh, here it is so all I'm doing all this the same way by corner loading and blending that into my brush I'm gonna go up this side of his nose and just a little as well on the little mouth and pretty much I think I'm gonna do a dip dot of buttermilk on his eyes on his nose you could do it on his lip um, so he's basically done and that's what I love about her designs too is they're so they work up so fast I did end up putting a little bit of this um, it's just a really fun co color to um, highlight with this neon the neons this is called Hot Shots Fiery Red. It used to be called Hot Shots. This is Neons. All right. Anywho, again, I'm just corner loading an angle brush with that. And I'm going to go on the opposite side of where we put the shading. So underneath. But it really makes red pop. I love um, highlighting with that. Look at that. See how it pops so nice. All right, now we're almost done. I'm going to um, outline everything with black. So again, you want a liner brush, and for any line work like this, really delicate. The smaller the liner, so this is the 10 slash zero, I would recommend that. I wet it and then I'm going to take it and make an inky puddle over here. Like make it really the consistency of ink. And then we're just going to outline. And this is, um, he's got fur, so it's okay if it's a little shaky and even maybe preferred. So to do the ears. I'm going to come across here and just put some little fur lines and it's much thicker than the pen would be but that's okay and put some little fur lines like that and then I'm going to go I'm going to outline the ear and I'm kind of being wiggly on purpose and it'll give it a little character and you don't have to be as perfect so let's go from here you can even have a little couple of hairs sticking up and outline his eyes oops you really want to make sure you're 
brush is loaded and you could give them eyelashes you could just go crazy you know that's the thing it's it's your piece Tracy gave it to us it's her design but you can tweak it and make it your own so this is his little furry face and nose And I mean, even the, the scarf is, is fabric, so it doesn't have to be a very straight line. So this is kind of a perfect time for you to use paint. You know, I mean, if it were something really straight, maybe a pen would be better, but I'm just really kind of almost wiggling the lines. It's just fun. And I think, oops, I didn't do his lip. How's that? Cute as a bug, right? Cute as a bug. So that's basically done. The last thing I did was spatter. And I used these little, um, I've had these, and I'm pretty sure Mary Allen gave me, hi Mary, where have you been? Mary Allen um, gifted me these. They sell them. I know um, Tracy got hers at Hobby Lobby in like a big pack, but I have these little kind too, like that, anything like that, even a button. I mean, you could use a button. So I basically just painted this. Um, I have a couple that I already did, let's see. I painted it with the warm white, this one. It's actually hard to see. Let's see, because I did put stickles on it, but I painted it warm white and then put white around the edges and I'll just glue that on there and put some stickles on and then I put a little um, bling in the center and he's all done. Isn't he cute? Oh, and then I definitely did, um, I just have, I see a little gap right here. Um, I use a sparkle varnish. I think it's, it's called starlight varnish to just give it a little sparkle. And that's it. Sign your name. Oh, see, look, he has a little chest hair. I forgot about his chest hair. So a little. That's it. And I mean, he could have eyebrows, right? Why can't he have eyebrows? So cute. I mean, you could put little whiskers. You could just go crazy. Um, all right, so he's basically done. Then the other thing I just wanted to show you on our candy cane, which is right here. I put out that gold and I have a little um, sponge. These are just um, cosmetic. I get these I get these at the dollar store and I just keep cutting them off to make it fresh because it gets hardened. So I'm going to go into gold, the metallic gold, now that this is dry. And I just kind of, see that's a big blob. I didn't really need that. But I like to do it like kind of pull down so that it gets it's like a rougher look to it. Not rougher, but it's thicker. If you want thicker, that's good. If you don't, don't. And then spatter. Let me just get. I have this really cool spatter brush. Um, so I'm going to use that. But. People spatter with fan brushes, all different. There's there's a lot of different ways to spatter, a toothbrush. But I happen to have this, and I like it. So I'm going to use it, and I'm going to do warm white. 
So I'm going to take a flat brush. That's how I like to load it. I'm going to get it wet and load this with some warm white. And oops, I'm really trying not to spatter myself. Spattering can be a very messy situation. So you want to make sure you're spattering in the right direction. So that's good. And this has a little thing, so I'm going to go like this. But it make, makes nice, fine spatter. That's what I like about this. Because when I did the other, um, I'm going to stop. <laughs> when I did these, I used a brush. And look how thick my spatters are. They're huge. Which is fine, but look how delicate these are. So, and then, like I said, you're just going to sparkle varnish, glue on your snowflake, and tie it up with a, I have this little gold string, and there you go. A random act of Christmas kindness, a la Tracy Morrell. Thank you so much, Tracy. And don't forget to sign it. I signed it. You can't see it very well, but my little signature is down there. And I wrote, Happy Holidays 2017. All right, you guys. That's it. Thanks for watching.